It's time for Meet the Leaders. Glad to have you joining us for it. Hi there, I'm David Smith, and along with me is First Selectman of the Town of Westport, Jim Arpey. It's good to have you with us, Jim. David, it's you? always good to be with you. Thank a you for having pleasure. me. A pleasure. Um, Westport is a, a magnificent community uh, filled with diversity and uh, interesting things and people to go along with those, which has made it a, a very desirable place for pe people to come for Mm. hundreds of years that's for sure mm. but uh, modern times are also here right. and uh, things are happening and as first selectman you got to feel the weight of the modernity on your shoulders a little bit I guess these days well it's uh, thank you for your positive comments about Westport uh, it is for me a, an honor to be the first selectman uh, for a town that uh, as you say has an interesting diversification probably different than many of our comparable suburbs in, oh, yeah. in Connecticut uh, but yes as uh, as, as things change shopping habits uh, for example uh, is, a, is an example of where we're working with our downtown merchants to make sure that uh, we're as open and inviting a community as possible for people who want to do shopping uh, in, a, in some ways in a traditional way, but in other ways changing. Uh, you can buy just about anything on Amazon. We all know that. Uh, and there are plenty of malls. And we, soon the Sono collection is going to open uh, at the uh, intersection of I-95 and exit 15. But, uh, but still, the Westport shopping experience is really what counts. And, uh, and what we're seeing now is more and more stores that are experiential in nature, that, that, that offer not just something you buy off the rack, but you have the experience doing it. As a town, we're trying to do everything we can to make that downtown as attractive as possible. Uh, for example, uh, we'll be uh, soon burying the last of our overhead wires uh, that are downtown. Ah, so uh -huh. again, making it's an attractiveness kind of thing. Uh, the sidewalks uh, are, have been re-bricked re in the last couple of years. So uh, just trying to make it uh, an attractive place and also trying to do things to make it easier for landlords and or businesses to come into town. Uh, small example we've just put together a guide uh, that's basically if you want to open a restaurant how do you accomplish that in Westport who do you go see uh, what are the process easiest way to, to do it that, uh, we think so it's on that's, it's on our website it's available in that's got to be a big help that's that's a complaint of many people as you found yeah, which is yeah. why you're doing it that's exactly right and we've, we're working to make the permitting process the the, the things that uh, for Day-to-day -day Westport, uh, not an issue, but if you're trying to open a business, build a building, uh, uh, put a deck on the back of your house, uh, we're now in the process of uh, converting to uh, a system that'll make that much more transparent, uh, presumably much more efficient. You'll, you'll know where your permit is at any point in time uh, and how that process is working. So uh, trying to do what we can as a community uh, to make it uh, efficient, effective, uh, and uh, easy to, uh, to get things done. Now, some people watching this, they're saying, that is so mundane, I can't even believe it. But mm -hmm. the reality is, if you need these things, this is going to stand them in really good stead in, uh, in so many different areas and so many different situations that mm -hmm. you find yourself in in real well, life. Well, it, it's interesting. I, I view my role uh, as making Westport as an attractive uh, and, and inviting a place as possible. And that ranges from big things like uh, uh, improving our, uh, our golf course, our public golf course is now rated among the top 10 uh, public golf courses in Connecticut. Uh, we have new bunkers, uh, new, uh, new uh, greens, uh, uh, and uh, Campo Beach, which everybody loves. Uh, in the past year, we've made that uh, a much more attractive p uh, place to, uh, to come to. We had some problems a couple summers ago with traffic, uh, overcrowded, uh, people not getting the access to the beach they want. And we worked on that uh, and this past summer uh, by all repute and by all measures, much more successful. Yes. So that's a, those are the big things that <clears throat> people think about. But then there's the little things like just the process of getting a permit, to, whether it's to open a restaurant uh, or, or do something else uh, physically that way. Now, how does, how does a town go about attracting businesses to it, such as um, the Main Street area, for example? Uh, I, I go back way far in Westport mm. uh, to recall when Main Street was, was all mom and pop. Mm -hmm. that, and yeah. that has transitioned mm -hmm. over the years into, uh, yeah. I guess, a mix. Yeah. 
That, that, that absolutely, the world the world has changed. As sure you were has. saying earlier, it's uh, we still have uh, many mom and pop businesses. They aren't necessarily concentrated downtown. Uh, actually, when I think about Westport, we uh, we have several downtowns. There's the, the one we associate with Main Street uh, that has uh, the, the kinds of stores you see on some of the most uh, well-known shopping streets uh, in the country. Uh, but we have the Saugatuck area down by our, our main train station. Uh, which, which has transitioned a lot in the last few years. Absolutely. And there, there, there it's much more of a restaurant and, and uh, entertainment uh, location. Uh, it, uh, a Friday, Saturday evening in the Saugatuck area, very busy, very That's active. Uh, but a lot of our mom and pops are now located along uh, Post Road, uh, both east and west, and that's uh, that's where you know the rents are uh, perhaps more attractive to a local business. It's the challenge of uh, valuable property landlords who've invested in their properties uh, who want to get uh, rents that make sense to them. Uh, at the same time, yes, you want to keep that local feel. And again, this goes back to, I think, the shopping experience downtown. Even the national chains have come to recognize that they can't do business the way they did business even five years ago, yeah. let alone a decade ago. Uh, so it's much more about experience. Uh, the new stores that, were coming, that are coming into our downtown area uh, are different different names than uh, you and I would remember uh, uh, from our youth. No, that's right. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, they're, they're stores that appeal to millennials. Uh, names, again, that aren't as familiar to me, but they're certainly familiar to my millennial daughter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so. One thing that you want to see accomplished in, in uh, 19, in the new year upcoming. Well, uh, one, uh, one challenge that we're facing right now uh, relates to Coley Town Middle School. Uh, we've, we had uh, a, problem, a problem related to the indoor environment, uh, some mold, uh, some air quality, and some water incursion. We've had to move the kids, the students out of uh, Coley Town Mill and the teachers, by the way, students and teachers. Uh, we've, uh, on a, a near-term basis, uh, some are in uh, Bedford Middle School and some are in, uh, in a portion of uh, Staples High School. Uh, that's a short-term solution, one that obviously can't be con uh, continued uh, for long term. Uh, but uh, but we had we uh, the, the, there was a lot of concern about the uh, the environment there. Uh, but we formed a townwide committee. Uh, the, 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 I'm working with the board of education and the superintendent of the schools uh, to make sure that we as a town are doing everything we can to address that problem and to address it as a community. Uh, so uh, as I was starting to say, we we have a, we formed a townwide committee uh, to work with the superintendent, to work with the board of education, to think through how do we address this problem, and and uh, it's it's an opportunity actually to to rethink some of our stra educational strategies. Uh, how do we deliver education? Uh, what kind of physical uh, locations do we need? Uh, to continue that, that education. Uh, early days in that decision process, uh, uh, how soon, whether we reopen uh, Coley Middle School to be determined, uh, but uh, nevertheless, whatever steps we take, I think we'll have a broad base of support. A problem that has become an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think Good that's the way that. we, uh, everyone should look uh, yeah. at, at, at challenges Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. That, that's, uh, that's very interesting, mm -hmm. and we will watch that with great interest. Yeah. I hope we can catch up with you in the not-so-distant future. It's always a pleasure. It's always good to see you, David. We thank thank you. you for having thank me Thank you today. so much. Um, that is the way it goes in Westport to date. Uh, that's all the time we have for our visit today with Westport and Jim Marpy, the first selectman. But we will make it a, again uh, before too long. In any case, that's Meet the Leaders for now, and I'm David Smith.